Good morning, everybody. Great to see you. Great to have you all here this morning at Argyle Community Church. And welcome to our harvest service. Uh, third, the first Sunday in October, we always mark as our harvest. If you're new here and you're not familiar, so that's fantastic that today is the day. So thank you. We'll, uh, we'll talk a bit more about this later, but thank you for those who donated and prepared this wonderful display. Today is also a family service, so there's no L zone, but there is a crash if you really need to go out with your little one. But don't worry about the noise because it's a family service. We want everybody to be in here, in the church. So my name's Mark. I'm sure most of you know that, but if you don't, Mark. And this is Lizzie, and Lizzie's sharing the service together. We're co-presenting. So Lizzie, over to you. Yeah, so Harvest is such a great opportunity to thank God for all the ways he has blessed us. And so I thought we would start this morning um, by a prayer of thanksgiving. And it's a familiar prayer to many of you because it's taken directly from the Bible. And we're going to do this as an interactive prayer. So I'm going to say um, a line, half a verse, and then hopefully the words will come up on the screen. There we go. And the words in bold, I would like us to all say together as a church. So this is taken from Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. His love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens. His love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. His love endures forever. He gives food to every creature. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Well. That's great. We're going to sing our first song. And welcome. I didn't welcome everybody at home there, but uh, welcome to joining us today. A uh, special word for Emily, who's not very well. Sorry, Emily, you couldn't be with us. But, and to others who couldn't join us, do come on, on, on other days. But we're going to sing that classic harvest song to kick us off. And we're going to, if, it, if you brought any food and you want, or any gifts, come down during this song and bring it to the front of the church and, and put it on the stage. Cleve, over to you. Well, I'd like to invite you to stand if you're able as we join in this great song, We Plough the Fields and Scatter, a reminder that all our gifts come from God. We plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land. But it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. He sends the snow in winter, the warmth to swell the grain, the breezes and the sunshine, and song refreshing. 
great to see such a wonderful display of donations. And Mark is going to be sharing in a little bit about where all those donations are going to be given. But first, we thought we would do a little harvest quiz to keep our theme going. And so, I'm going to split the church right down the middle. You are team one. You are team two. And if, you're, if anyone's sort of, you know, over 18 is sitting back and going, this is for the children, let me tell you, this quiz is not easy. Chris and Judy struggled a lot. Um, and so we're going to need you all to work together. And what's going to happen? This is a fruit and vegetable themed quiz. And a picture is going to come up on the screen of a fruit or a vegetable. And it's going to be a really zoomed in picture. And I basically just need you to guess what the fruit or vegetable is. The way the points are going to work is you will get two points if you get it, just get it right. But I do have a hint for each one as well. If you need the hint um, and you get it right after that, you will get one point. The questions will not be carried over to the other team. Therefore, you can discuss by shouting across the room if you really want to. So, can we have question one, please? So this is going to team one, and I think we've got a suggestion there. Just shout it out. I'm afraid it's not a strawberry. I'll let you have one more guess. Anyone else? I'll let you agree who's going to say it. Andrew, have we... it's not a key. I'm afraid you're not going to get that point. What is it? Cucumber. It is a cucumber. I'm afraid. <laughs> I did hear some cucumber mentioned, but it wasn't your final answer. Okay, so this team, next question. You might want to decide what is going to be your final answer. So, next one. Go on, Andrew, what do you think it is? It is a pineapple, so that is two points for team two. Okay, it's all right, team one. You've still got a chance. Next one. Oh, this one's hard. Yeah. I'll give you an extra bonus point if you can tell me what sort of cabbage. Savoy. I'm sorry, they've got three points now. It is indeed a Savoy cabbage. Okay, this team. And I want someone nearer the back to give an answer for this one. Oh, this one's also quite hard. Do you know what it is? Oh, that is a really good guess. But it's actually not an orange. Again, you get a second guess. Uh, Miriam? It is indeed a carrot. So you get another two points. Well done. Okay, back to this team. Oh, yes. Yeah, well done. Another two points for team one. Back to this team. Gregory? I think, it, let me double check that one actually. Oh, actually wait, it's not. It's not. I thought you were right then. Uh, you get a second guess. Or you can have the hint if you would like. Actually, I'm going to go right to the back, Janet. I'm afraid it's not a butternut squash. I heard that said over there too. Um, oh, well now I want to give you a point. You know what, I'm going to give you one point. Oh wait, did it come up? No, there we go. I'm giving you one point. It is indeed a pepper. I'm very arbitrary with my point giving. Okay, back to this team. Anyone got any ideas? Maybe someone nearer the back? Oh, I saw a hand half go up then. It's so close. It's not a butternut squash, but you get one more guess. Yeah, it is a pumpkin. This one is the pumpkin. Well done. Okay, back to this team, and we're getting harder. Come on, Claire. It is an artichoke. I have only ever ate an artichoke for the first time last a couple of weeks ago. So that is indeed an artichoke, and we're back to this team. Oh, this is a hard one. I like this one. Uh, right at the back. 
Well done. Very good. This is, in fact, broccoli. Yes. I thought that was a really good picture. It didn't look like broccoli. It looks like a chubby. And you're all doing very well. We're very neck and neck. So we're back to this team. Can you get this one? Again, you've got two guesses. Ethan? It's not a tomato, but that is what I thought it was. I thought that was going to get guessed. One more. This is your final guess. I want someone that's not spoken before. Yeah. It's also not pomegranate. That is a good guess. Okay, for one point, I'm going to give you a clue and then let you see if you can guess, which will, I'm afraid, still mean this team win. But Jesus cursed a tree growing this fruit. I think I heard that. It is indeed a fig. And so, in second place with eight points is this team. And in first place with nine points is this team. Well done. Brilliant. Now, all of these fruit and vegetables all occur naturally. And when Mark and I were planning this service, we thought about how they just show how creative God is. All of these things occur in nature. And God has not only been creative in creating fruit and vegetables, but he has also been creative when he made all of us. We have all been made different. We express a lot of what's called diversity, which means we're all very different. And so this is a theme that we're going to explore a little bit more this morning. We are all different, which means we all have different things we are good at. And so before we move on, I want you to turn to the little group of people you're sat with and discuss with them. I want you to tell them one thing that you are good at. Some people might not be very good at this. Some of you might be thinking, I'm not good at anything. If this is the case, you might need to help each other out a bit and tell each other what you think they're good at. But I want you to all turn to the person next to you and say something you're good at. I want you to all remember that thing that you are good at. We might come back to it later in the service. But I want you to remember that thing that you're good at as we now turn to a song in which we're going to thank God for the fact that he has made us unique and different. Great. Well, I'd like to invite you to uh, stand up. This, this song celebrates diversity and it talks about the ways... You might worship God if you were an animal. And Liz is going to do the action, so follow her.
great wasn't it well the harvest is as we've as we've been talking about is a, a great time to celebrate all the goodness and the provision of the Lord all the food the rain the sunshine that's made all this possible and that's a really important part of harvest it's also of course it's about community isn't it it's about coming together it's about acknowledging it's about thanking collectively but it's also uh, thirdly I think about remembering those who are less fortunate than ourselves and that's why each year we choose a charity to support at this time and that's why this year we've chosen ready food so ready food in case you're unaware for some of you who might be new to the locality is Reading's primary food bank in fact they're commissioned by Reading Borough Council to provide this service and they do a fantastic job two of our congregation uh, volunteer we've got Anne and Anthea volunteer and they help take this sort of food and put it in in bags so it can be distributed out to people in the community really needy people people who otherwise wouldn't have this food in their home so 10,000 parcels I mean that is a lot of parcels isn't it in one year and uh, that need is very real and genuine and actually it's going to get even worse because from tomorrow, those people who are on universal credit will be 80 pounds worse off with the checks they get from next week. Because the 20 pounds is being removed, the 20 pounds a week that they've had during the pandemic. So the demand for things like this are going to go up. The electricity bills are going up, the food bills are going up, people are coming off furlough and unemployment will go up. This demand is going to be continue. So. This is a really important thing and actually we want to continue beyond harvest. So we're going to have a permanent ready food banner for a while and really encourage you each week, just think about maybe you could put something in. Something that will last, has a long date on it and is not pasta. Please, no more pasta. They've got tons of pasta, a mountain of pasta. But um, So food, that's one thing we can help people who are in need. But another thing we can do it's helped people at a much more practical level as well. So you were all given, I think, a leaflet when you came in, a torch leaflet, so one that looked like this. So in the coming weeks, actually, this leaflet is going to be put into the food parcels because people not only have needs for food, but they have other needs. And a lot of those needs are around practical and personal things, often to do with things like befriending. And you can see some of the ideas there, DIY and and uh, prescriptions and helping people at home. So I want to just a couple of minutes on Torch for you all because Torch is a help hub and it's one of several help hubs in Reading. Thank you, Judy. Uh, there's two others in Early and in Whitley. And Torch was founded, Agar were a founder member of Torch back in February. And so it's become quite a significant part of the help hub scenery in, in Reading. So this, the help hubs are here to deliver, deliver all these practical things. So uh, you know, we go and we help somebody put a shower up or a curtain rail up. Um, we, we do some practical things, maybe in the garden. But most importantly, we go and talk to people. And we befriend people. And we help those who are in isolation, maybe just over a cup of coffee, because actually that's what most people want. And there's a lot of people who are really needy, who've fallen into a gap where there's no social provision for them. And the sorts of people, things that we do as a help hub, beyond just helping people practically, are also signposting and pointing people to things that we all do in the church. Things like 
honeypot, things like the Bridges language classes. And in fact, there, are, there is a family here today. Where's Moses and Beth? Where are you? Beth and Moses oh, uh, in the corner there. So they saw the torch leaflet outside the church here, wanted to learn English, improve their English skills. Beth did. And she got in contact with Torch, and that's how they've come to be in the church today. And this is happening with all the churches involved. There's contact where people are being brought into churches. And the third thing is that we do things in the community. And so we're helping to make the community a better place. And next week, actually, we're going to be doing a street clean around the streets here, starting at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning outside the pub next door. And if you've seen the state of the place outside the pub, that's where we're starting, to clean up outside there as well. So come along and join us. You don't need to be a volunteer with Torch. You just come and join. And all the other churches have been invited to join as well as the local residents. So if we just move on, I just want to show you a little, a little map here. You can see our green dot there next to Reading West Station. These are the 10 churches currently involved with Torch. And we all have a little area next, Judy, around the churches that we're prayer walking and praying and leafleting because we want to impact those communities. But the people who are calling Torch and we are responding to are all over Reading. They're not just in our community here, but the need is all over Reading. And yet also, the people who volunteer next slide are actually all over Reading as well, because they're people like you and I who live all across the town. And so we are in a phase now where we want to encourage more volunteers, and I'm really grateful for those in the church who already volunteer. Uh, Janet is a volunteer, and uh, Sandy and Francis and, and Cheryl and I. Um, so if anybody else would like to join us, then have a chat with me. Um, it only takes just one or two hours a month, actually. You might get called out. And, uh, it's up to you how, how much you want to do. It's entirely up to you. It's not that demanding, but it is a wonderful opportunity to help people. And we've got a special event on the 13th of October in St. Matthew's in Southcote. So if anybody would just like to hear more, or come and join and be a part of that event and, and celebrate some of the stories... From, uh, from some of our clients and the people who refer to us as well. It would be great if you would like to join us. 7 o'clock on the 13th of October. So, there you go. It's great to be able to make a practical difference for people and to show care, whether it's food or time or using our gifts with the community. Cleve, you're going to lead us in our next song. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to announce the next song. Um, we're going to listen to a song now by Emu Music, um, which focuses on oneness and unity. And uh, as we listen to this song, let's make it a prayer. Let me just read some of the words. Sister, let me wipe your tears. Brother, let me bear, bear your fears. Come on, every daughter, every son. Let us walk in love, for we are one. Though we walk a long and broken road, we are here to bear each other's load and forgive as you've forgiven us. Let us walk in love as we are one. We are one in the Father's love. We of every tribe and every tongue. We are found in the risen Son. We are bound together by his blood. Let us walk in love for we are one. Let's listen to this song. Sister, let me wipe your tears Brother, let me bear your fears Come on, every daughter, every son Let us walk in love for we are one Though we walk a long and broken road We are here to bear each other's love Forgive as you've forgiven us Let us walk in love for we are
turned on properly. Let's try again. So I need a volunteer. I need them to be between the ages of 12 and 45. Um, and if you are under 18, can you please check with your parent that you are okay for them to be, for, to be on the live stream? So do I have any volunteers between 12 and 45 who are happy to be on the live stream? <laughs> I can see some parents looking at children like, come on, you can do this. It's okay if not. I can go older, but oh yeah, thank you Gregory, that's brilliant. And I also would like up to invite up Harrison and Tom, who are also going to be volunteers. <laughs> so, when I say go... I've got a challenge that I want you to each start. Do not start your challenge until I say go. If you complete your challenge, you will get a Freddo. Harrison, your challenge is to draw a snowman. Gregory, are you ready for this? Your challenge is to walk or to, to get from here to, to about where Andrew is. Okay? And your challenge is to, un to peel this banana. However, we're not going to make this quite that easy. So Harrison, can I please give you a blindfold? <coughs> Harrison is not able to use his eyes for this challenge. Gregory, you also have a body part that you're not allowed to use for this challenge. You are not allowed to let your feet be in contact with the floor at all. And Tom, you are not allowed to use your hands to 
peel this banana. So, let's see how you do. I think you probably need to start on the floor in some way. I'm sorry, Gregory. <laughs> okay, three, two, one, go. There we go, Gregory is smashing it. Easy, easy. <laughs> yeah, come back as well. <laughs> T Tom doesn't seem to be doing quite so well. Let's see how, oh, Harrison's doing a... That's just not bad, ish. <laughs> I do apologise if those on the live stream can't see Tom. If you can, that's great. If you can't, what we are witnessing is someone really failing to pee a banana with his elbows. We'll just give you a few more moments. Harrison, are you almost done? Yeah? Shall I show you the church what you have produced and you want to see it yourself? So take off your blindfold. That is your snowman. Here we have a drawing of a snowman. You can get a Freddo. Gregory did absolutely smash that challenge, so you may also have a Freddo. Tom, Tom is trying very hard. He has not managed to peel his banana, but you know what? You can have a Freddo anyway, and you can have the banana as well. OK, can you three please go and sit down? hard for us to do certain activity is when we can't use all of the parts of our body because all of our different body parts thank you are important we need our eyes to see to draw clearly Gregory did manage that very well but had I got him to try and travel say a mile he would have probably struggled a lot more and Tom just he tried <laughs> Now, we're going to hear a passage from the Bible now, and in it, it talks about how all of the different parts of our body are important. And then it makes an interesting analogy, and it talks about how, as a church, all of us are also important. All of those different things that we're good at, that we talked about earlier, we need all of them together to be a church. So I'm going to invite Mark up to do our reading and then Jamie is going to share a little bit more about this passage. Okay, well if you have a Bible or you've got it on your phone or by any means uh, 1 Corinthians 12 starting at verse 12. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 12. Unity and diversity in the body. Just as a body Though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we all were baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. And so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now the foot says, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And the ear, the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all to be one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think of as less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the whole body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there would be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. 
If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. That's the word of the Lord. Thank you, Mark. Hello, everyone. Good morning. It's good to be here and share with you. So we're going to think some more now about what we just heard read out from the Bible because that Bible reading teaches us about what church is. And it teaches us that church is a people of community. We're going through a series at the moment looking at what church is. This week we're focusing on how church is a people of community. So let's think about community for a second. What does that word mean? Well, community, a community, is a group of people who do the same kinds of things together. So a golfing community wax small balls around a course together. A school community studies and learns together. A surfing community rides the waves together and so on. Communities have the same things in common and they're united by those things. That's community in general. But what about the church community? Well, Paul tells us all about the church community in the passage that we've just read from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And he uses a metaphor and he says this, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. And he means, so it is with Christ's church. So this metaphor that he's using, a metaphor is when we use one thing to help us understand another. He's using the metaphor of the body and he's saying that the church is like the human body. And the point he's making is this. The body has many different parts, but they are all united to form one complete whole. And it's the same with the church. People in the church are different, aren't they? We look at ourselves, we're different from each other. We look different, we're from different backgrounds and countries. We've got different skills and abilities and so on. We speak with different accents, but we're all essential to the church, just as every part is essential for the human body. And Paul gives us an example to help us understand. The example of the foot and the hand. So he says, now if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. Now the foot is different to the hand, isn't it? They're very different. And um, it's, it's the case that it's different, but that doesn't mean it doesn't belong. It belongs, the foot belongs to the body just as much as the hand does. And it's like that with the church. And perhaps you're at church, perhaps you're at this church, and you're thinking to yourself, well, I feel quite different from everyone else here. I've got a different personality, I feel, to everyone else. Or I'm from a different country, or I have a different background or upbringing or skills than other people here. If that's how you feel, that doesn't mean that you're not part of this church. You are part of this church, very much part of the church. A church is made up of different people, and that is essential. That is church community. You belong to this church, to God's church, if you're a Christian, just as much as the foot belongs to the body. I wonder, do you ever sort of say to yourself, or perhaps a thought crosses your mind and you kind of say, well, I don't feel like I'm very valuable to Argyle Community Church because I'm too old or I'm too ill or I'm not clever enough or I struggle with mental health issues or I'm just a child or whatever it is. I'm not really very valuable. If you're thinking like that, God says, don't. Don't think like that. Every Christian who is part of the church is indispensable, is absolutely necessary. I wonder, does anyone know what my favourite sweets are? Anyone happen to know what my favourite sweets are? I buy quite often. No? Sometimes I secretly out eat them in elders' meetings. 
No, um, I have a packet here. It's tea sweets. Can you see? Uh, licorice all sorts. Okay. So um, I'm going to open my lovely packet of licorice all sorts. Do you know why I like them so much? It's because I like licorice, but I like these even more than a standard uh, stick of licorice because what, the way I eat them is this. I look in them and I choose two that are different. So here's a pink one, and then here's a yellow one, and then I put them in my mouth together. Like that. Mm. And you know they work well because of the difference coming together in your mouth. The diversity in a packet comes together and tastes delicious. And it's the same with the church. Now I feel like a hamster because I'm trying to speak. <laughs> I've got sweets in my mouth. But it's the same with the church. When different people are brought together by God, that's community. That works well. That's God's plan. That's amazing. And so therefore, in the church, there's no place for racism or sexism or ageism or classism or ableism, or exclusion, or anything like that. No place at all. Because we're meant to be different, coming together in unity as a whole. That's community. That's church community. So when someone different comes into church, what do we do? We welcome them, even though they may be very different to us. We welcome and we accept people into church, just as God has welcomed and accepted us through our faith in Christ. Us with all our faults and failings, sins and shame. We follow that pattern. And this is very powerful. And this is very wonderful. And this is church community. What I want you to do now is turn to the person nearest you or in the little group where you are and just share with the person next to you a time when you were welcomed into a community. Perhaps you started a new job or moved into a new neighbourhood, started at a new school or joined a club or something. Talk about an experience you had when you were welcomed in to that new community. Just do that for a couple of minutes now. Okay. Right, well, I, I think we know how good it feels, don't we? When we go somewhere new and we're a bit unsure, maybe we feel like we're sticking out like a sore thumb, we feel a bit different, but everyone welcomes us into that new community regardless. That's a special feeling, isn't it? That feels good. The flip side, hopefully we haven't experienced this too much, but it feels really bad, doesn't it, when we go somewhere and we don't get welcomed, and we're ignored, and we're shunned and pushed away. That feels awful. It's, it's good, and that's what we want to do here. We want to warmly welcome people into church, because God warmly welcomes people into his church. That's community, and that's what we want to do at our goal. 
So I want to finish off the sermon by thinking about what sort of things we can do, what sort of people we can be in order to be the church community that God intended, in order to be all of the parts of the body, as it were, working together in unity. So first of all, we can be a people of community by celebrating diversity. That's the first thing we can do. Remember what we've looked at. One body, many parts. That's the metaphor that Paul uses. One church, many different individuals. God designed diversity into his church, didn't he? That's meant to be. Let's celebrate that. That's a fantastic thing. And part of the diversity that we enjoy here at Argyle is that we come from many different nations. It's incredible, isn't it, that we come from four different continents are represented here. Five, if you include northern England, because that's kind of like a separate continent all by itself, isn't it? <laughs> Especially Sunderland. But anyway, they're just so different, and yet we welcome them. But it's fantastic, isn't it? And we really welcome you from a different country to the UK. We love having you here. Let's celebrate that. And we have planned... Um, a meal to celebrate diversity on the 7th of November. That's a Sunday after the service. We invite you to bring uh, some food with you and share it, and we're going to eat together to celebrate. And I think there's just something, I don't quite know why, but there's something special about eating together, isn't there? It enhances and enriches community. It strengthens us as a church. It makes us more one, more together. So let's, let's celebrate by coming to that meal. Also, a people of community work to build community. We want to try hard to build community. So we work hard, as we've been thinking, to welcome people to our girl so that they feel they belong. Those of us who've been here for a long time, we see a newbie and we go to them and we smile and we say, welcome, it's good to have you with us. We welcome all sorts, don't we? We welcome feet, we welcome hands, we welcome eyes, we welcome ears and so on. Whoever you are, we want to say, come and be part of us. And we work hard to value church members that we might regard as lesser. Sometimes we have that, don't we? Sinfully, we think, oh, that person, they don't contribute very much to church life. And in our minds, they're kind of like a notch down. But in verse 22, Paul says, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. It's incredible, isn't it? They are absolutely essential, Paul says. Even the weak members of the church, whatever weakness that may be. So we work hard to remember that and to value each other equally. And we work hard to fight against division and, and to make sure that we have this equal concern for each other. Because that's what Paul says in verse 25. There should be no division in the body, but its parts should have equal concern for each other. Celebrate our differences, don't allow them to divide us, and come together as a unified whole. We work at that. And lastly, a people of community are a people that help the wider community. So as a church, we're a church community, but we look beyond, don't we? You know, there's a rhythm to church community, isn't there? There's the rhythm of gathering and scattering. So we gather together, on a Sunday morning as the church community, and then we scatter into our separate communities, our work community, our neighborhood community, our school community, whatever it is. That's the rhythm. And we gather together, but then as we scatter into our separate communities, we help people and we love people and we care for people in those scattered communities. And so we do things like volunteering, we don't only volunteer for the church. We don't only give ourselves to the church. We also are concerned about other communities. We've heard about Torch from Mark. And that's a perfect example of not just keeping everything within these four walls, but saying, I want to help people in the wider community of Reading. I'm going to use my skills. If I can do gardening or DIY, I could just listen to someone down the phone, whatever it is, I'm going to help people who are outside my church community. And I just want to remind you of that event which seeks to bless the local community around the church, Argyle Road and Argyle Street and Brunswick Hill and all those streets. The clean-up meeting um, this Saturday coming, 10 till 12. Can you help? Can you come along? Can you help make coffee and serve it? Can you 
pull up weeds and pick up litter and so on, so that the wider community is blessed. Well, I'm done now, but this is a family service, so I want to finish with something for families, okay? I'd like you to have a think and choose an action from the ones that are going to come up on the screen. I want you to ask yourself, how could we do something as a family to help someone in our community this week? How could our family build community, work hard to build community, to make it better? Or how could our family celebrate diversity in the community? Families who are here today, have a think, have a little chat for a minute or two, and then Lizzie, I think, is going to come up and finish off the service for us. While you just continue to discuss that, can I ask uh, the volunteers I gave a basket of jigsaw pieces to, would you just be able to go around and give out those jigsaw pieces to everyone now? Everyone else, you need to make sure you take one jigsaw piece. <laughs> And then can I also invite up Tom and Ethan and Sarah and Andrea who are going to help me with the prayers to close this service. Uh, Ethan, do you want to stand here? Tom, do you want to go down that way? Uh, if you go before Ethan, there we go. No, no, no. Brilliant. Thank you so much. So we're now going to just finish uh, or move into a time of prayer. And we're going to use these jigsaw pieces to guide our prayers this morning. And so I want you to look at your jigsaw piece. Look at the unique image on it. And I want you to hold your jigsaw piece in your hand and pray for your uniqueness, the special things that you are good at. Thank you, God, that you have made us all wait, that you different. Made all different. Thank you that you have given us all special and unique gifts. Lord, help us to know how to use these different gifts to join in with the church. Amen. Now look at your jigsaw piece and look at the parts that reach outwards. Look at these parts and pray for the people who reach out and help and show God's love to others using their unique gift. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for the people who have been using their gifts now at Torch and at Ready Food. Lord God, we thank you for the time and the gifts that they give over to you in your service, Lord, to help other people. And Lord, uh, we just pray that you would help us to use our gifts in order to help other people. We thank you, Lord, for the way that um, the people serve in the church here, Lord, the music group and the PA team, using their gifts, Lord, to serve you. Amen. Amen. So now look at the parts of your jigsaw piece that have got spaces to be filled. And we're going to pray for people who have lost someone 
or something in their lives and feel that gap. Father God, we just do lift to you now those who we know, those who we don't know, but you know about them, who have lost loved ones. We lift them before you. We thank you that your word says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And that is a promise. So we thank you for the comfort that you offer and provide to each and every one who has lost someone close to them and who are grieving at this time. Amen. Now I want you to turn to the person close to you and try and fit your jigsaw piece into their jigsaw piece. Now the likelihood is your jigsaw pieces do not fit. I can see Sue trying all the different directions and they just don't fit. And so I want us to now pray. I want us to now pray for those people who perhaps find it a little bit hard to fit in. Father, thank you that in Jesus we are accepted and loved. No matter who we are, where we're from or what we've done. We do pray for those that find it hard to fit in. I pray that they would know by the power of your Holy Spirit that they are loved and accepted by you. And I pray that people that come into this place would know that love and acceptance through us too, Lord. Please use us in that way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now I want you to swap your jigsaw piece with someone else sat near you. And I want you to hold this jigsaw piece, which belongs to someone else, and I want you to pray for someone else. And this can be the person of your choice. It might be a friend or a family member. It might be someone that you know is struggling. It might be someone that you, is not yet part of God's church and you really want to um, see them come to Jesus. And we're just going to have a few moments of quiet whilst you pray for that person. Amen. Thank you very much to all my volunteers. You can go sit down now. So we're going to uh, have our final song in just a moment. But first, I have got an important prize to give out. Now, many of you may be aware that when we, the children go out to L-Zone, they get given stamps. And they get given stamps for turning up. They get given stamps for good behaviour, for listening well, for contributing well. And they get given stamps if they can remember the memory verse from the previous week. And so today, there is someone who has reached 100 stamps. When they get to this point, they get a certificate and a little prize. And this person, in my few weeks of knowing them, has amazed me at how good they are at the memory verse in particular. So, Harrison, can we give him a round of applause? <laughs> Brilliant. So Cleve is now going to lead us in a song. Our closing um, song reminds us how good it is when the family of God dwells together in faith and unity, where the bonds of peace, of acceptance and love are the fruit of God's presence among us. So I'd like to invite you to stand if you're able to. And uh, we'll sing through, with, this is a new song, um, so we're going to actually play through the whole verse and chorus before we sing, but do please stand. <laughs>
stay standing for a moment? I think we should just have a few moments quiet. Let's just invite the Holy Spirit just to come and just speak to each one of us and just ask ourselves, what are we taking home from today? Well, Lord, we just rejoice that you, in your presence with your people as we've been singing. And we thank you for this day in which we've celebrated and given thanks. We have marked how important community is and we've remembered those who are in need. So, Lord, we pray as we go out this week that we might walk hand in hand with you, know your presence in our lives and indeed be able to bless others through all the fullness and the goodness that you have given to us. So we thank you for this. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, please, have a seat. Just to, uh, just to close, um, there's tea and coffee afterwards. And for those who are in the church, but not you at home, there are apples uh, picked. Uh, these are russets and coxes picked yesterday in, a, in Kent from an orchard. So genuine local produce. Um, so do help yourselves to that. Thank you to everybody who's contributed this morning, particularly to the team at the back. We had some last minute IT issues before you all came in, but you wouldn't know, would you? No. Uh, thank you to Cleve and the musicians, the stewards, and, and everybody who's contributed, Lizzie. Thank you for that. We've got one last slide, which was the details of the street clean on Saturday. So 10.30 here, and it's, it's a great time. Um, for you all to, ten, sorry, 10 o'clock, I beg your pardon, not 10.30. All for you all to come and join in the community. And we, this is the third one we've done. It really does make a difference. So do come and join if you can in that. Um, I think we are done, unless anybody else has anything else to add. So thank you, everybody, today. It's been a great harvest service. Stay on, chat and share. And uh, all of you at home, we wish you well. So the service has ended. Thank you very much indeed. God bless.